Hey there guys, what's going on? Adam Wallace here. I'd like to welcome you to this uh, 737 CDU setup video. In the meantime, I think it's absolutely imperative that you get a little bit of background knowledge. If you get a bit of background knowledge, it basically allows you to learn and take the information in just that little bit easier. So firstly, um, the FMC, the CDU, the FMS is all probably things you've heard of, but they're actually different. This is a control display unit, this physical thing right here. And this control display unit sends information to the flight management system. And the flight management system is a specialized computer that performs you know, a variety of in-flight tasks. It reduces the workload of the crew um, and it just makes the whole operation of the, uh, the aircraft much easier. It was introduced in the 767 in the 1980s, so it's been around for quite a long time, about 30 years. Um, and it, th that's pretty much all you need to know for now. But I'm just going to get right in, I'm going to tell you everything about this aircraft, sorry about that. I'm going to tell you everything about this, um, this system and how it works. And more importantly, how to program it, because that's why you're here. So as we can see, we're on the first page. Um, you'll be greeted by this page here. So you've got your PMDG setup which goes through you know aircraft configuration, panel state load, all that stuff. FS actions, which is, you know, closing the doors, putting the fuel in, uh, you know, doing the uh, the pushback, all that stuff. Then here you get the flight management computer section. And this is where we will uh, program the flight management computer, um, and I'm going to tell you all how to do it. So as you can see, we're on the identification page. Um, the model is a 737-800 winglets variant. If yours doesn't have winglets, it will not say winglets. Engine rating 26k, 26,000 pounds of thrust, that essentially means in our engine. Nav data, so your ARAC and your nav data is essentially there's some kind of navigation database that contains nav aids and waypoints um, within the, uh, the flight management system. And sometimes they get out of date. As we can see, the one that we've got out of date, the one that we have is out of date because it went out of date in the 22nd, no, it didn't, it went out of date on the 18th of September 2013 which at the point of this video is almost three years ago, but that's fine. The operation program, you don't need to worry about that, you just get different variants of software that control the uh, control display unit. This just happens to be this particular program. We don't need to worry about that. Let's go on to the next page, which is the position initialization. I have already done that, but for you to set the IRS on this aircraft, you need to set the IRS selectors to navigation and you also need to have ground power while you do this. Then boxes will appear here that will say set IRS position. Click last IRS position. This is not how obviously the, the real aircraft do it, but I don't think you really care about that. You just want to get this thing set up. So you just click on this right top LSK and you'll put it into the IRS boxes. And whether you've got your IRS alignment time set on realistic or instantaneous, your uh, navigation displays will look alive like this and not, not aligned. So you can see that's the position and initialization page. It just shows you your reference airport and your gate. Let's go the, uh, to the root page. As you can see, I've already pre-filled this in. But uh, so the origin is the airport that you're currently at, and um, which is Lima Echo Mike Golf, which we can see is Malaga Airport. If we uh, go back down to the CDU, we can see that the uh, destination is uh, Echo Golf Papa Hotel, which is Edinburgh. We'll be departing runway 13 and our flight number is North Shuttle 222. So from then, if you want to fill in your route, you just go on the next page. And this is where it takes us to the page that a lot of people do struggle with and don't really understand that well for some reason, but it's actually very simple. So all you do is you'll input the information. For example, I want to go to the Bravo Lima November VOR first. You will get given a route. You don't just randomly come up with this at the top of your head like I am. You will uh, use you know a program like Simbrief. I'll put a link in the description. So you just put it in here, and it pops up. I'm not going to be using Airways today. An Airway kind of looks like um, Uniform November 213, and you'd put it on the left side because this is the VIA section and this is the TO section. So we're going to go direct. We're actually not though. We're going to fly through a standard instrument departure, but I'm going to talk about that later. But we're going to go to BLN, that will say direct, and our next waypoint um, will be Salco. And put that in. So we're going direct to BLN, BLN direct to Salco. Hopefully that makes sense. They're just waypoints. Um, 
that's a VOR and that's just a, a waypoint essentially. That's how the aircraft flies about the sky through uh, a series of waypoints in air corridors. It's virtually a highway in the sky, literally, that's all it is. Um, and I'm going to go back to this page. So you, all you would do is you fill out your, your, your whole route in this and you press activate and you put that in. And you can see once the route is activated you get a magenta line here signifying that the route is activated. But we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you something else that's going to save you a lot of time and it's called a company route. So if we want to go from Malga to Edinburgh you need to uh, do this previous to flying the aircraft. And I'll probably do another video on this just to make it a little bit easier for how to set a company route up. But um, so use a you know a program like Simbrief and you'll get a company route file. You will not be able to do this unless you have set up a company route file. I uh, I can't stress that enough. But if you have, for some reason, you still want to watch this video. I mean, if you're setting up company routes, you already know how to set up the FMC. I am fairly certain. However, just so you're aware, this is another thing you can learn. So you don't need to put the route in yourself. We can just pop that in. And as we can see, our route has changed. But if we hit next page. That's not by magic. We now have a route to our destination of Edinburgh, um, and it's put it in itself. That's because we set up a company route that just saves us saves us a lot of time setting it up. But that's not the route finished, guys. Um, we've still got a dip in our departure and arrival to set up. So we're departing off runway 13 today, and that's given us a series of standard instrument departures. Standard instrument departure is essentially a way of leaving the airport um, that's organised. Most aircrafts, when they fly, similar standard instrument departures depart the aircraft the same way. It's not just so aircrafts are leaving the sky out of the airport and flying wherever the hell they like. It's for coordination and it's for traffic management essentially. So, here if we go to the, uh, the route page again, hit next page, we can see that our first waypoint. It's BLN out of our departure from Malga's runway 13. So we want to go on departure, runway 13, and the BLN to Charlie. Just choose the top one. And as we can see, our route has now changed. If we look to the uh, the nav display here, from what was a simple left turnout, is now turned into some kind of route out of the, that, That's what essentially what a standard departure is. So we're going to depart out, do a right loop over the airport, head to the Malga VOR and head towards Bravo Uya November VOR. That's essentially what that means. Um, and that's how you set up a standard instrument departure. And I've already been through what a standard instrument departure actually is. And you get the same for an arrival route. I'm not going to talk about that just now. Um, but a, 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 a standard terminal arrival route is basically a SID, but for landing. Essentially, that's what it is. So now if we hit to and at ref, we'll go to the performance page. One of the most important pages in the entire flight management computer. Norwegian they use a cost index of 15. The cost index is essentially how efficient you want the aircraft to fly. 1 being the most efficient, 99 being the least. Reserves, that's your reserve fuel. This tutorial is unfortunately not about fuel planning. This is about the setup of a CDU. So you put your pre-calculated reserve fuel into these boxes here. I'd like to point out that the boxes are information that must be computed for the aircraft to follow the, uh, the flight plan correctly. If you want to get your zero fuel weight, double click and that will put in your gross weight, your optimum cruise level and your uh, your zero fuel weight also. Trip fuel will be your predetermined number. As we can see our optimum flight level is flight level 399. Obviously we're not going to fly at that and we need to fly even at an even, uh, yeah, correction. At an even altitude because we're flying north, so we'll fly at flight level three eight zero. Apologise. Flight level three eight zero. All you need to do is type three eight zero, put it into the boxes. Now, for that, you've just told the aircraft that you want to fly at a cost index of fifteen. That's your reserve fuel. That's your plan fuel. With your zero fuel weight and your gross weight computed, that's how high you want to fly. That's your going to be your cruising altitude today. Flight level 380. Your cruise wind. Normally, there, I'm just going to guess, you can get cruise winds off charts. Or if you run active sky, you can hit control 11 and it will give you a winds aloft report such as this. So um, at 380, we can see the winds 244 at 17. 250 is fine. 
and we'll just input that in. So now we've told the aircraft, that you put the cruise window in because it's for performance data, obviously because we're on the performance initialization page. Transition altitude is the altitude that you basically put your altimeter as the standard, or 1013.25 is the standard um, pressure. ISA deviation, you don't need to worry about that, however ISA is how we calculate performance um, and it's got to do with you know, a lot of things such as air density, air pressure and temperature. So um, let's say for example, you just put in the temperature, um, it is at your cruising altitude. Um, cruising altitude temperature is minus 55, so we'll put that in, then the ISO deviation will show here. I do apologise, put that wrong inside the scratch pad, so minus, which you can find to the right of the zero, and put that in there, and that will give you, not your, oh shit, I do apologise, now don't do that, I put that my ISO deviation is minus 55. That was a huge mistake, and that would be really bad. So there we go, put the ice air temperature at the top of climb, minus 55, and that will give us our ice deviation. That's all you need to know for that. It's for performance. You don't need to know anything else. If you get our N1 limit, this is the takeoff D rate page, and it's a page that a lot of people have a lot of trouble with. To save the life of the engines, we're going to do a 22k engine D rate with an assumed temperature of 55. I've simply pulled that number out of my ass. I don't know how to calculate that number, and lots of people don't. It's something that basically requires, you know, your ATPLs really. I mean, it's very difficult. Essentially, what an assumed temperature is, which I've put there, is uh, it tricks the aircraft into thinking it's uh, 55 degrees outside, and it basically allows the aircraft to perform more efficiently. It's something like that. You don't need to know about that. Just make sure you put a D rate to save your engines. Go on to the takeoff page. Normally it's a flaps 5 departure, and it gives us our N1, just check that that says that on your engine displays, 89.6, 89.6, that's fine. Double tap the center gravity LSK, and it will give us our elevator trim, so 5.20 units, center of gravity 24%, and it also, it gives us our takeoff speeds, which is fantastic. But don't put in your takeoff speeds just yet, you want to go into the departure page and check the winds, 350 at 12, hit next page, 350, forward slash, do apologise, 350 slash 12, and put that in, now you can put your takeoff speeds in, there we go, and bear in mind just to get that green highlighted box away, um, that's essentially so you can control the scratch pad with the keyboard, um, you just right click it and that box will disappear. So now we've inputted our takeoff reference data and all that good stuff. Um, I'm just going to go through all the other um, pages. Getting to the end of the setup now. So you'd be pretty much good to take off with this setup I've set, other than obviously doing the arrival. But you just find the appropriate standard terminal arrival route with the arrival runway. And it's virtually the same procedure as the SID. If you can set up the SID, you can set up the STAR. So there's not really a point in me going through the setting up of a standard terminal arrival route. I'm now going to go onto the hold page. You ever see our aircraft, you know, whether they're too high or too fast, they'll start spinning around in circles. Obviously not at a standing point, but they will fly in kind of like a, a NASCAR track sort of style. That's called a position hold, and you can set a position hold at any time you want by the hold page. I say I've got to hold at Malga VOR. I'll set that in and just watch here. There we go, Malga VOR. There's now a hold over the airport. He would never do that, obviously. But, um, and here we get a Malga hold. So we've got various things that you don't need to worry about. But there's your target altitude. If you want to descend down, you can set that in that. EFC time. So that basically means that if there's a radio failure, that's your time that you're officially allowed to leave the hold. Gives you your recommended speed and all that stuff. Essentially, that's all you need to know from the... Uh, from the whole page. Now we get the climb page, which just gives us all the climbing information. Cruise, same shit. Descent page, you can get our forecast. You can input your winds just for a more accurate fuel and time prediction. Again, we've got ISO deviation and Q and H. Transition level for descent, stuff like that. Now here's something that's interesting. Um, if you go into the fixed page, this is for situational awareness. So hit their airport. Leave my echo mic off. See if we want a five nautical mile ring. Put the runway, uh, the course on one three three. 
slash five nautical miles we can see a five nautical mile circle appears around the airport now the normal figures would be a four nautical mile ten nautical mile and twenty five nautical mile twenty five nautical mile for your minimum descent altitude um, 10 nautical mile for a 10 mile final and 4 nautical mile for uh, starting to configure for your final landing so that's when you normally do the checklist, put the flaps, the set landing flaps with the gear down all that stuff. So that's the fixed page and you'll be pleased to know that that is pretty much everything. Uh, so you do have an index page and you've got a nav data page in which you can uh, input certain stuff like say if you want to know the, uh, the elevation of Edinburgh Airport ident, I'll give you the elevation. Say we want to know more about runway 24, it'll give us that just by inserting that. But that's it. That's the setup of the SFMC. It's really not difficult. And if I just click on the engine flight instrument system, click that to plan, go on to the legs page, I can actually check the route and I can check that it's all fine. So there we go. And that's it. Now, one thing I am going to do just to show you, because this, you will get these. So you get a root disc continuity. They're called discos. So I'm going to make one. We can see that here. All you do, click here, click it on, execute. And that's how you get rid of them. But essentially that's it. There's nothing else to say. Um, and in order for the, uh, the aircraft to follow you know, you, the programmed speeds that you've put in and the, and the pre-programmed uh, altitudes, that's you'll use the, these two things here, LNAV and VNAV. That's it. Anyway guys, that's the setup of the FMC. I seriously hope you've enjoyed it. Hopefully I made it simple enough. If I didn't, I do apologise. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment. But in the meantime, guys, for myself, it's been Adam Moss. Hope you've all enjoyed the video. And uh, I'll see you guys later.